Recently, there's been a lot of talk about PS5s and whether the liquid metal leaks out of where it's supposed to be, and also whether it creates dry spots on the APU. The first thing we're gonna look at is this PS5 that I paid $260 for because it'll randomly turn off when you're playing a game. Once I get that figured out, I'm gonna open up these two PS5s, look at the condition of the liquid metal, and see if there's dry spots on the APU and if any of the liquid metal has spilled out. I played the game Horizon Forbidden West for the PS5 for about 18 minutes, and this is the error that I got. Now, now I think I might know what's causing it, and it does have to do with the liquid metal. Let's get it opened up and have a look. This video is sponsored by iFixit, more on them in a minute. And now let's have a look at this fan. I mean, it's not clean, but it's really not that dirty either. We'll give it a good cleaning before we put it back in, but I'm not really too worried about overheating on this PS5, although I am glancing at the heatsink and uh, it's a little plug. So it could be overheating. Usually if it's overheating, it'll show an overheating message on the screen. But on these PS5s, I'm not sure if it always does that or not. This PS5 also has not been opened before. The warranty seal is still intact. So we're gonna remove that. There we go. Okay, now we can take this top plastic piece out. Let's see how dirty it looks now on the inside. Okay, we got quite a bit of dirt there on that little baby heat sink right here. I mean, it's not horrible. I've seen much worse, but it's also pretty dirty. Now I get to take off these 43 totally necessary screws so we can get this top metal plate off, and then we can get down to the board. Okay. Finally got all those screws. So many screws, I need to take a nap now. This thing's on here really tight. Oh, that's because I forgot a screw. That'll do it. I mean, that's part of the reason, not the whole reason. There we go, still on there tight, but not too bad. Okay, nothing too crazy there, I don't think. Okay, here we go. Oh, wow. That's a massive dry spot on this APU. So this is what I've noticed on a lot of PS5s is there will be liquid metal over most of the APU, but then there will be a dry spot. This one has a huge dry spot on it and you can see the same thing over here on the heat sink. And it's even like oxidizing a little bit right here. I see that as probably being the main thing that's causing this issue with the PS5 just randomly turning off during a game. Now, unfortunately, I can't prove it. There's no way I know for sure, for sure. So what I'm gonna do is re-spread the liquid metal onto the APU and heatsink so that hopefully restores that thermal connection between the two and makes it so this PS5 stays way cooler. Now, I still think it should come up with an overheating error if it truly is overheating, but it seems like sometimes PS5s just don't do that. So the first thing we wanna do is take the liquid metal that's already there. I'm gonna suck some of it up from around the edge right here. And then we're just gonna take some of this and rub it in until that oxidation is gone and we get some nice fresh liquid metal there. I don't know how well it's coming across on camera. Oh, there we go, that's showing pretty good. So, all of this right here is oxidation on the APU, and that's gonna make it so the liquid metal just can't, can't be right against the APU. It's got kind of that layer of oxidation there, which will definitely cause a problem. So we need to get that off first, and we can respread this liquid metal. And we should be good to go. Can't get all of it off, but we got most of it. So what I'm gonna do is put some more liquid metal right here, and then we'll get it rubbed in. Or that's what we'll try. That's the goal anyway. There we go, we're getting it. See how that part I just rubbed is a different color? That's rubbing all that oxidation off what we need. So 
So that's looking much better on the heatsink. Now we need to do the same thing over here on the APU. Okay, now let's add a little liquid metal over here. Okay. And then, you know, a little extra just for good measure to make sure we have the perfect amount of liquid metal. There we go. Now let's put it back together, play our game, and see if we can play it for more than 20 minutes. Actually, the first time I tested it, it played for 45 minutes, and then every time I played after that, it would get lower and lower, and the last time was only 18 minutes. So we'll see if it'll go past 45 minutes once we get this all back together. So I'm not actually gonna do any cleaning on this PS5. I'm not gonna clean this heatsink. I'm not gonna clean the main heatsink. I wanna know if the liquid metal, the dry spot on the APU, is what's causing this thing to shut down. So the only thing I did was take it apart, respread the liquid metal, add some more liquid metal, and then put it back together. So that should theoretically tell us if that was the issue or if it's something else. And now with our PS5, put all back together. Let's get it started up, see if we can play a game. Two of my favorite iFixit toolkits are the iFixit Manta Driver Kit. This one has tons of bits for almost anything you might want to get into. It's also got the larger driver and the larger bits for larger items. The iFixit Protect Toolkit has a lot of options of bits and a driver along with the extension, but then it also has pry tools over here, suction cup, ESD wrist strap, along with tweezers and more pry tools over here. iFixit also offers tons of other toolkits. One of them is the Marlin screwdriver set. iFixit developed this screwdriver set with data from over 50,000 repair guides. They took the most common screwdrivers that people needed and put it all into one set of screwdrivers. And all of these screwdrivers fit into this compact quality tool bag so they're with you and ready to go wherever you go. iFixit tools are backed by a lifetime guarantee and the people that work there are top notch. If you're interested in any of these toolkits or iFixit as a company, I'll put links to them right in the description that'll take you right there. Well, let's get it started up, see if we can play a game. I'll leave a stopwatch right here so we can time how long it takes before it turns off. If it's going to, I'll probably play off camera just because it's more comfortable. Let's see how long it takes. And after 46 minutes, the PS5 did turn off. It did go the longest that um, I've had it go before it turned off. So I can't say that respreading the liquid metal made a difference in this case. Now, I still think the liquid metal needs to be respread on APUs like that where there's a dry oxidized spot. But in this specific case, I'm not sure that's the cause of the problem. One of the other things that might be causing this is either a bad power supply or a power supply that's really dirty. So let's get this back apart and take a look at that. There we go. And you can see right here, it looks like there's already like a little dry spot kind of forming. Let's keep taking it down and see what condition the power supply is in. And there we go. Oh, wow, look at this. That power supply is extremely dirty. So, I mean, that can definitely cause an issue. Look at that. So all of that was plugging all the power supply ventilation holes. That could definitely be our problem. And in addition, the heat sinks on this thing are also very dirty. So I'm gonna give this a good cleaning and then we'll start it up and see if it'll play longer than 45 minutes. Now, in order to clean these heat sinks, since I'm gonna to have to tip it up, I don't want this liquid metal just running all over the place. So I'm actually going to install the motherboard onto this and then we'll do the cleaning of the heat sinks. And there we go, look at how dirty that is. This is gonna be satisfying. Oh yeah, look at that. And then this heat sink down here, that is caked on there pretty good. So 
the cooling on this is definitely not as efficient as it probably should be. So I am hopeful that this might fix it. The other thing about this is with the heat sinks being this dirty, that, that would cause the APU to get much warmer than it should be. So that might have caused more oxidation on that APU. And now with the PS5 clean and put back together, let's start it up and play our game and see how long we can play. And start. I've been playing now for one hour and 11 minutes and absolutely no shutting down. Everything's working great on this PS5. So I think between the liquid metal not being spread correctly on the APU and then it being so dirty and plugging both the heatsink and the power supply, that's what was causing it to shut down. On the PS4, when it overheats, it shows a message on the screen, but on the PS5, it seems like it doesn't always do that. Now I'm really curious though, if we'll find dry spots on the APU of this PS5 and this PS5. So let's get them taken apart and see what we find. All right, let's start by taking apart the first PS5. There we go. I'm not gonna show this whole process, but this PS5 is very clean. Also, this PS5 has more ventilation holes right here for the power supply, which is interesting. So I'm gonna get this torn down off camera. Let's take a look at the APU, see if there's any dry spots on this one. Uh, it is important to note that this PS5 does have the warranty seal intact, so nobody's been into this. Again, I don't know the history of these two PS5s. I bought these as salvage from an online liquidation company, so I know no history at all. These also are the 1215A models, which is the newest model of PS5. And I'm gonna show this part of the teardown, even though I said I wasn't going to, just because this is the first time that I've had one of these on my channel. I'll show this part of it at least. And this is the one with the much slimmer board. I mean, the motherboard on this is just this right here. On the original PS5 model, it went all the way to the edge and all the way out here as well. So this is significantly smaller, which is pretty typical with Sony's 1215 models. And instead of 43 screws holding this metal plate down, there's only 31. So, I mean, it's not a huge difference, but definitely nicer than 42. And now with all those screws out, let's have a look under this metal plate. All right, just got a bunch of little thermal pads and nothing too crazy here. And here we go. Let's see what it looks like. Oh. So far, not bad at all. So this liquid metal, this is what it's supposed to look like. There's no dry spots. The liquid metal moves around easily and looks nice and fresh. There's no oxidation anywhere. So this is what it's supposed to look like. Unlike on the PS5 that we fixed today, that one just had such a huge dry spot. This is the newest model, so it hasn't been around near as long as the other PS5 we just looked at. So I would hope that the liquid metal looks better on this and it definitely does. Hopefully this means that Sony's getting their PS5 liquid metal issues figured out, but time will tell. Let's get this other PS5 opened up and see what the liquid metal looks like on that one. And this next PS5 is a model 1115A, so this one's a little bit older. Let's see what we find on the thermal paste on this PS5. This PS5 is very clean. It looks like it probably has been used, but it's super clean and it has not been taken apart before. And here we go. Oh, big time dry spot. So on this one, you can very clearly see this is a big dry spot. The liquid metal just won't really, uh, it sort of spreads over here. So the difference between this one and the very first one we looked at is this is not oxidized yet. Cause when it's oxidized, then that makes it so the liquid metal won't even spread out over it and you have to rub all that oxidation off. So this is actually good news because this will still spread out here. But the bad news is that there's definitely a very large dry spot. You can see that most of the liquid metal is just all around the outside of this APU chip. So this whole middle part, in my opinion, is not getting effectively cooled. Let's see if we can spread this back out. Yeah, it's spreading. So that's the good thing about this one is even though there was a large dry spot, it had not oxidized yet. 
and so it is pretty easy to spread still. One of the things that I've seen people discussing online recently is whether the liquid metal will just leak out and leak all over the board. In my opinion, that is highly unlikely unless the PS5 has experienced some sort of fall or drop or something like that. Sony has done a good job of creating a seal around the liquid metal so it doesn't leak out. I'm not saying that it can't. I'm not saying that it hasn't happened. I'm just saying that I find that unlikely. As far as the liquid metal having dry spots, between my experience taking these apart and what I've shown today, it's very clear that PS5s do have a problem with dry spots on the APU and oxidation on those dry spots on the APU. How widespread this problem is, I have no idea, but I know that I have seen it on a number of PS5s and I've pointed it out in several of my previous PS5 repair videos. I've seen a lot of people online saying that you need to keep your PS5 horizontal instead of vertical because when it's vertical, the liquid metal has a tendency to kind of uh, slide down on the APU so it's not cooling the top of it. My opinion is that it's probably better to have the PS5 horizontal because I can show you right here that the liquid metal moves very easily. You can see that just having it up like this, the liquid metal is already pooling down here at the bottom. And if I change it the other way, the liquid metal will go down to the bottom of the APU right here. So my opinion is that it's probably better to keep it horizontal. Again, that's just my opinion based on what I've seen. A lot of people have their PS5 vertical and have absolutely no problems at all. I think it's probably good to periodically open up your PS5 and respread that liquid metal, especially if there's oxidation on the APU. Then you need to clean that all off and respread the liquid metal so it's got a nice surface to match with the heatsink so it can cool effectively. I would say if you're using this a lot, maybe once every one to two years. The other thing we definitely found today is that PS5s are very sensitive to overheating and they're very sensitive to having the heatsink and the power supply plugged with hair and dust. The PS4 was less sensitive to this. I saw PS4s that had the heatsink mostly plugged with hair and dust and they would still cool okay. The other thing to note on the PS5 is that it doesn't always give an overheating message. So if your PS5 is randomly turning off you might want to give it a good cleaning i have a video showing you exactly how to do that that i'll put up on the screen now so go check it out if you need to clean your ps5 thanks again for watching today and i hope you have a good one